Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Um, I hope this week that God has been speaking to you through his word. I also hope that you are taking the time each day to make sure that you're going out of your way for someone, doing something for them, and talking about that in your journal. So today we're going to read parts of 1 Samuel chapter 25. It's a little breakdown of what's happening here. Um, we get to see a little bit of that human nature in David today um, where he's going to get kind of angry and we're going to totally understand his response. So here's what's happening in 1 Samuel 25 and I do want to make sure you read this on your own but just kind of giving you some background information here. Um, David and his men, they've, they've lost Samuel. Samuel's died. Um, they've buried him and now they're traveling and on their travels they come um, in an area where a man named Nabal lives and so David and his men they are needing to pause um, it's it's a time where um, they're having a feast which is a pretty regular situation in Israel just a time to pause and worship the Lord um, so it's one of those times so David tells his men go to Nabal so Nabal's really wealthy and David has helped him quite a bit in the past and that's very clear in the chapter as we're reading. So he tells them, go to him and just say, hey, basically, can you help us out here? Can we pause here? Um, treat us like your servants. If you just have anything that you can offer to us, food, rest, shelter, can you help us out? And so David's men do that. And Nabal's response is, uh, we see this in verse 10, then Nabal answered David's servants and said, who is David and who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away each one from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shearers and give it to men when I do not know where they are from? So he's just like, who are you people of David and how do I really know that you're with David and why should I help you out? Why should I give you my bread? Why should I give you my water? And you're going to find out that basically David's ticked. He's mad that this is the response, right? And can we blame him? Like, clearly Nabal can help out. David has helped him, and he wants nothing to do with it. And David is angry, and he's headed out to basically just destroy Nabal and his family and everything that he has. And we're going to see in this that Nabal's wife Abigail she kind of comes to the rescue she comes out to David and she's like listen I get it uh, my husband he is not a very smart man I don't know what he's thinking but let me talk to him and let's work this situation out and we see that David kind of is able to breathe he's able to think he realizes that perhaps destroying Nabal and his whole entire family isn't actually the right idea um, and I want you to put yourself in either David's position here or maybe the position of Abigail or maybe even the position of Nabal. So has there been a time if you're in that position of David when somebody has wronged you and your response at first has not exactly been godly and how can you correct that? Or maybe you're in Abigail and you see that a friend or somebody in your life is not responding the way they should, how can you go to them appropriately, right? And that takes some wisdom. Or maybe you're in a ball and somebody has come to you for help and you could help, but you just don't want to. What's the correct response there? So I'm gonna share a little story with you. I think I've shared this with my class before, but I had something happen to me this summer um, where I felt like I was a little bit in David's position. Um, had somebody say some things to me that were wrong and kind of take something to, from me that was very important to me. Um, and my immediate response, what I wanted to do, it wasn't what I did do, but what I wanted to do wasn't godly. I kind of wanted the whole world to know why I was wrong, um, what that person had done to me, why I was in the right. And, um, I didn't really care at the time if it hurt that person or that person's reputation because I was angry and I was wronged and I just wanted the whole world to know um, why I was right. And surely you guys in some way 
can relate. And uh, I pretty immediately started texting Mrs. Walker and Mrs. Brownlee and I was like, listen to what happened to me and I'm so angry and this is what I want to do. And I was so thankful just to have some godly friends in my life during that time um, who were able to say, okay, okay, I get why you feel that way. Um, I get why you would want to do those things. You have every right to feel that way, but let's slow down. Let's pause. Let's think about how does God really want you to handle this? And just in that pausing and praying, um, God really just let me let it go. And he gave me um, those godly friends to see that revenge isn't mine. And the Lord's very clear about that. Um, if revenge needs to happen, that's the Lord. That's up to him to do. And you see in this chapter that um, God did what he needed to do. And he worked things out for David. And so we don't always have to get the last word. We don't always have to um, right wrongs in our life. We can let things go. We can let the Lord handle that. And we can be that godly friend who helps people breathe and calm down. So I hope that God speaks to you through this today. Make sure that you pray before you open up the word. Make sure you're filling out your journal as you go. We'll turn that in on Friday. Um, I won't have a video for you tomorrow because I'd really like for you to watch the chapel video and you can journal about that. So I hope that you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you Friday.